continuous segment examination of a fakia using slit lamp and explanations as well here you can see normally the vitreous is shaped concave anteriorly with the lens in front of it but when you become aphakic you can see the iris tends to go fall backwards and the vitreous is convex forward in this patient and if you've got a loss of vitreous through wound and cataract surgery here you can see the vitreous going and causing the iris to move upward or updrawn iris we'll be discussing today a case who's 79 year old female who had a history of uh, decreased vision in both eyes she's right aphakic and left she's got a cataract uh, the refractive error showed that she is a plus 12 diopter on the right with visual equity of 618 and plus 6 with a 1.5 diopter cylinder and visual equity of 618 as you can see she's has a nucleus sclerosis of ns4 plus on the left eye but still she is hypermetropic Nucleus sclerosis of plus 4 will obviously cause the hypermetropia to become less. That's why she has become plus 6. Probably previously she was a plus 10. And on the other side, she is aphakic. And aphakia typically produces a number of plus 12 because of the absence of lens. The cup disc ratio was 0.3 on both sides. And intraocular pressure was 10 on the right and 12 on the left eye. So we're going to see... What features you see in patients with aphakia? Typically, a patient with aphakia would have a deep anterior chamber, a tremulousness of the iris, and he would have a wound depicting maybe either intracapsular capsular surgery or an extracapsular surgery. And a jet black pupil. Here you can see a diffuse illumination of the anterior segment and increase the sit lamp magnification and you can see the anterior chamber is deep the distance between the the slit and the iris is is, is significant and we will we'll compare it to the other eye when you see the cataract which has got a shallow anterior chamber the other thing which is important we'll see is the pupil is drawn upward in this patient and he's got atrophy of the iris in this area and in this area. Typically, this would happen if somebody had a cataract surgery with an iris prolapse. When this iris is stuck in the wound, that tends to cause iris atrophy at a later stage. So here you can see the pupil tends to constrict, but it is very mild constriction. The pupil, if you describe it, it is vertically oval and it is updrawn or peaked superiorly and typically that peak is usually due to presence of aphakia. The other thing which you want to see in this slit examination is when this is a slit on the surface of the cornea and you cannot see any reflection from the surface of the lens where the lens should have been. If there is pseudophakia then you will get a brighter reflex in that area and if you do a double light reflex using a torch you wish not see that double light reflection which you would normally be seeing. In this patient, you would see in the inferior part of the pupil, there is some bit of residual uh, capsule and there is some lens proliferation in that area. I will try to show you the vitreous tag where you can see clearly over here in this area. You always tend to make the uh, magnification higher and tend to go over that area and here you can see the pupil is peaking and this is the strand of the vitreous that is visible and they say when this is there when the pupil constricts or contracts all the time it tends to cause traction on that uh, area of vitreous and that can lead to press or development of retinal break so that's why whenever you have a peaked pupil secondary to vitreous in the wound you tend to do a go in surgically and remove it or you can do a YAG vitreolysis anteriorly as well. The other thing which you want to see is the vitreous is not present or not being seen in the anterior chamber but sometimes that is also visible when you put a slit lamp. So, so that means that the anterior vitrectomy has been performed in this patient but the vitreous could not have been completely clear. Now the other thing which you compare going to see is the other eye. Here I show you the lens of the normal size and this is when the 
lens become cataractous, it tends to become bigger in size. And here you can see, as it becomes bigger, it tends to push the iris forward. And here you can see the anterior chamber, the depth of the anterior chamber is pretty deep here, and it is pretty shallow. The iris is pretty narrow to the endothelium in this area. And this is what we are going to show you in, uh, in, the, in the slit lamp examination next. The other thing is whenever you see a lens, you need to classify the grading of the cataract. So whenever you see it again, you can see if there's any progression or if the uh, disease is at the same stage. So you classify according to the lens opacification classification system in which you will see that you know, there are three category criteria for classification. One is nuclear uh, or color, the other is cortical spokes, which you see, and the third is the posterior subcapsular cataract. Here you can see the nuclear opalescence is seen when you shine a light with a slit beam, and the cortical and posterior subcapsular pacification is seen in a dilated pupil when you do a retro illumination in which you see compare it with a red reflex. Here you can see typically the nucleus sclerosis tends to be very minimal in one and two it's slightly greenish and then with the green you have a yellow and then grade four you see green, yellow and then you tend to get brown and that brown area is called a brunescent cataract. So an examination when you do a diffuse elimination in the patient we're going to see next uh, on the next eye of this patient here you can see the anterior chamber is shallow the if you do a diffuse elimination you can see this slightly greenish reflex the pupil is constricting and whenever you do a slit lamp examination you look at the lids to see if there is uh, any blepharitis you want to see the puncta if there's any occlusion or the tear lake and to see any epiphora. So once you've done that, you tend to go in and to see the interior segment, you would go on a higher magnification. Here you see there's very little space between the slit and the anterior slit on the cornea and the on the surface of the iris, showing that he has a very shallow anterior chamber. Typically that patient would need, uh, if you do a gonioscopy and an angle is shallow, you would go in and do a YAG aridotomy. Here we look at the nucleus sclerosis. You can see that the nucleus sclerosis is there and it producing a dense greenish color appearance and it, it is if you if you had dilated the pupil it would have a brownish tinge to it as well we did not dilate or you don't dilate these patients with shallow anterior chamber because you can induce an angle closure glaucoma in these patients in the end we just want to share with you what a patient with aphakia would look like wearing glasses. Here you can see he's wearing aphakic glasses. So if this is a plus 10, uh, you can see this is, you can see the eye tends to look bigger inside or magnified because there's a high convex lens and produces magnification. And this has its disadvantages as well. Which you, when you compare this with a high myope, you will see that they tend to have glasses which tend to minify the size of the eye. So here, if you compare these two, you can see the eyeball is actually looking smaller. And these have got these edges on this where, because they're thick, high concave lenses are thick on the edges. So this is what you see on the edge of these, while these aphic glasses are high convex glasses tends to be thinner or thicker in the center so they don't have an edge in this area. So this is the examination findings which you typically would see in a patient with aphakia which are very important to identify and once you've identified you would try to see if there are any associated complications with aphakia. One which I showed you was vitreous in the wound. The other thing which you can have is cystoid macular edema in these patients. And the third thing which you can have is secondary glaucoma in these patients. So we'll come back and discuss more cases in future. Thank you very much.